Reading an elbow x-ray can be challenging, especially when trying to identify fractures after an acute elbow injury. A systematic approach can aid in the radiographic recognition of occult signs of injury. Here are the steps to follow when reading an adult elbow x-ray. Step 1. Review the alignment. Step 2. Review the fat pads for effusion. Step 3. Review the bony cortex. Step number 1. Alignment. Check the anterior humeral line and the radiocapitellar line. Anterior humeral line. This line should intersect the middle third of the capitellum on the lateral view. Fractures usually result in displacement of the capitellum posteriorly away from the anterior humeral line. Radiocapitellar line. This line is drawn through the middle of the radius posteriorly and should bisect the capitellum on both the lateral and the AP elbow radiograph. Failure to align properly indicates a radial head dislocation that requires prompt reduction if neurovascular compromise is to be avoided. The anterior humeral line should intersect the middle third of the capitellum on the lateral view. The radiocapitellar line is drawn through the middle of the radius posteriorly and should bisect the capitellum on both the lateral and the AP elbow radiograph. In patients with supracondylar fracture, the capitellum is usually displaced posteriorly away from the anterior humeral line, and the radiocapitellar line may not bisect the capitellum, as shown in the radiographs. Step number two, effusion. Check for raised fat pads. Anterior fat pad evaluation. A visible anterior fat pad can be normal, it is a small radiolucent shadow adherent to the anterior aspect of the distal humerus. An abnormal anterior fat pad is described as a sail sign because it is unusually prominent and bows outward to form a triangular shape. After trauma, blood can accumulate in the intraarticular space and push the fat pad anteriorly. A positive sale sign in the setting of trauma is a reliable indication of an intraarticular fracture, even if no fracture line can be identified. Posterior fat pad evaluation. Radiographic visualization of a posterior fat pad is never normal and always signifies fluid in the intraarticular space. Again, in the setting of trauma, this strongly implies fracture of an articular surface. Note that, a visible anterior fat pad can be normal, but a bulging anterior fat pad is abnormal and is described as a sail sign. A posterior fat pad is never normal. Both a sail sign and a posterior fat pad signify the presence of an intraarticular fracture. This radiograph shows a visible anterior fat pad, which can be normal. This radiograph shows a sail sign and a posterior fat pad, which signify the presence of an intraarticular fracture. Step number three, bony cortex. Check around every bone on the film. Hourglass sign or figure of eight. Search for an adequate hourglass sign or figure of eight at the distal humerus. If absent, the study is not a true lateral, and interpretation is less reliable. Radial head. Careful inspection of the radial head is paramount since fracture lines are often not visible. Look for subtle disruptions in the cortical contour. Olecranon. Look for fracture lines and subtle disruptions in cortical contour, especially the coronoid process and the olecranon. An olecranon fracture is a break in the bony tip of the elbow, which is part of the ulna. 
An olecranon fracture is usually caused by a direct blow to the elbow or from landing on the elbow. Radial head fracture is the most common elbow fracture in adults. Symptoms of radial head fracture include pain, swelling, difficulty bending or straightening of the elbow, and inability or difficulty in turning the forearm. An elbow fracture dislocation is a serious injury that often happens after falling onto an outstretched hand. Attempting closed reduction of the elbow is the initial management of choice. A neurovascular injury can occur with elbow dislocations, and it is important to identify any injury before and after reduction. The neurovascular check should include an assessment of the radial, ulnar, and median nerves, as well as the brachial artery and the pulses in the hand. When reading a pediatric elbow x-ray, it is important to distinguish normal from abnormal anatomy. Radiographic evaluation of the skeletally immature elbow requires knowledge of the normal sequence and appearance of the secondary ossification centers of the elbow. Assessment of the anterior humeral line, radiocapitellar joint, and Bauman's angle is important. Supracondylar humerus fractures are the most common type of elbow fracture in children. On the other hand, radial head fractures are the most common type of elbow fracture in adults. Crito is a mnemonic used to determine skeletal age from x-rays of a child's elbow. Crito stands for capitellum, radial head, internal or medial epicondyle, trochlea, olecranon, and external or lateral epicondyle. These letters represent the order in which the secondary ossification centers of the elbow appear and fuse. The appearance of secondary ossification centers of the elbow is predictable, but may vary from patient to patient based on sex, maturity, and may even vary from one extremity to the other. The crito mnemonic can be used to remember the chronologic order of ossification. In this four-year-old boy, the capitellum is well formed and the radial head is just starting to ossify. Olecranon should not appear at this age. Bauman's angle is a measurement used to assess the alignment of the elbow joint, particularly in children, for evaluating elbow deformities and fractures, such as supracondylar fractures. The angle is measured by drawing two lines, one along the humeral axis and the other along the lateral condyle, and measuring the angle between them. Bauman's angle helps determine if a fracture is displaced or if there are any deformities in the elbow joint. In conclusion, reading an elbow x-ray requires a systematic approach to avoid missing occult fractures of the elbow. By following the steps outlined above, clinicians may accurately identify fractures and other signs of injury in both adult and pediatric patients. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.